Pleasure. Today we saw a leaders meeting, the fifth in as many weeks, and it ended rather abruptly. Were you surprised by that? Uh, no, but uh, since we didn't really have anything of substance to talk about, we probably shouldn't even had the meeting in the first place. It started actually, when it, when it ended, you were pressing the governor on just that t issue. You said, so why are we here? And he said to you, well, I was hoping that you guys would tell us a little bit about the cuts that you wanted to make. Um, you didn't seem, that, that answer didn't really seem to satisfy you. No, because uh, really I think it was more about the, the speech that he wanted to make at the beginning of the leaders meeting. And uh, quite frankly, uh, I met earlier this week with the governor and some of his staff with our staff going over again some of the things that we have uh, put forth as ideas for discussion. So it had nothing to do with the budget, and I think it's uh, pretty much a, well, an, an, a not very well-kept secret that they're close to a budget deal uh, with the two majorities. And uh, I think that's what's going to happen. This uh, June 28th uh, date that the governor says, I guarantee we're going to be out of here. Well, I suspect we'll be out of there before then, and this is just all about, quite frankly, I think just uh, gamesmanship and posturing and, and that real substance, which was my point. Do you think that you said something that upset him and so he called it off, or he just determined that he was done with the thing and wanted well, I to think get out? He, he got what he wanted to get with some FaceTime with the media, show like he's in charge, and then let everybody say whatever they were going to say and then end the meeting. Uh, that's why I said there was no agenda, and that was my point. Why are we really here? Uh, we can be in session working on bills doing whatever, or maybe how about having a productive uh, conversation about the things besides the budget that have not uh, been addressed since the very first leaders meeting I attended last, uh, last year. Actually, well, at least uh, Senate Democratic Conference Leader John Sampson got your name right, which was, which was an important moment. Uh, it was markedly, and we haven't actually spoken to you since the last leaders meeting, which was very con hot. There was a lot of back and forth, particularly by yourself. You pressed the governor on a number of issues. Uh, since then, has anything changed? I mean, you got a meeting out of it. So that is some uh, give from the Democrat side because there was zero Republican participation before. Well, I think, uh, quite frankly, uh, and even by the nature of bills that have already been sent, uh, was not based on a, a consultation basis. Look, we understand that the, the Democrats control the Senate and the Assembly. They're in the two majorities. They're the ones that are going to be prim primarily negotiating with the governor on the budget, uh, but we have just said, what is your reaction to some of the things that we've talked about? Well, what are some of the things that you've talked about? In that meeting, you had a meeting with the governor. Was the governor was actually there? Oh, yeah. It was the governor, myself, and staff. Okay. And, um, but the stuff that we had given to them for ideas and suggestions is the same list that we gave all the legislative conferences back in March. Uh, we've provided this list of ideas for discussion, whether it's further reducing, uh, you know, our, our uh, labor costs, non-personal services, consolidation of agencies, and really, in essence, it, there's things that they don't do not want to do, uh, and that's why I don't think they're engaging in it is because they just don't want to do them. Well, does further reducing labor costs mean layoffs? Is that what that means? I think it means that uh, we're going to have to cut the payroll, uh, which. You do it a couple different ways. Do you postpone pay increases, pay raises? Well, which uh, the unions say they won't do. Say so they won't do, but there, as I said to the governor, we believe that there's another methodology that has not been explored yet uh, that the legislature can declare a, a fiscal state of emergency, not the governor. Uh, but if they do that and if they put certain uh, provisions of what they're going to do to deal with the fiscal emergency within a legislative bill, uh, there's already uh, case law precedent that those may not be subject to or are not subject to lawsuits to prevent them. Mm. But unless they're really willing to, to try it, and you won't know until you try, uh, but again, I don't think he could get the two majorities to actually deal with that issue. And that was my point is it's not we should be trying everything. Uh, and we've also been saying for the last year, he brought it up today himself, what do you do when the stimulus money runs out? It's going to be even worse than what it is today. And so I think they're just postponing mm. uh, the very tough decisions. And even on the, when I asked them specifically, where's the financial plan? How are you going to pay for whatever they, we are doing? And I'm not even arguing about what uh, uh, cuts have been uh, put forth. I'm saying for the spending that we are going to do, 
Where's the revenue stream? And, it's, and that's why I said your household budget, if you want to go spend $40,000 next year on whatever, you better know that you've got $40,000 coming in. Or you borrow it, which is what brings me to my next point, which Correct. is, do you believe that the governor said today quite clearly, now of course last week he said quite clearly he was open to borrowing as a, a last resort to sort of close the final gap, if you will, when the budget talks are going on. Today he said, I'm against borrowing. Which one of those things do you believe? I can't believe either because he's said it both at different times. And that's what I'm saying there. What's the conviction? What do you really, truly, are you going to stand behind? So does that mean, like, I think Dean tried to ask him a question. Will you veto a budget bill that has borrowing? And, you know, he, of course, well, he, he didn't said he that. would. He said he would if you have my back, which, is, which, really means, which really means if you have my back because it takes two-thirds of the House, of either House, to override a veto. Correct. And so, therefore, if the Republicans stood firm against that, which I, I believe they would, I believe I expect that you would. Although the Assembly has a Democrats have a veto-proof majority, so it's, right. it doesn't make much of a difference. Do you? Let me just put it a different way, At least though. For today, anyways. For today, indeed. The, uh, the let me ask you this question then: Do you believe that this budget can be finished or will be finished without borrowing? No, I think that they're going to try to borrow because they're not, they're not willing to make the spending reductions necessary so that you wouldn't have to borrow. And I believe it'll have some sort of tax increases in there. Don't know what they're going to be. Uh, it's commonly referred to, as you've heard, the big ugly at the end. Mm -hmm. And I think what they're gonna do is get the appropriations done and at the, at the very end bring forth uh, the financial plan that has borrowing in it, I believe we'll have it, and also tax increases, which obviously we're opposed to. Have you heard talk, I know uh, being in the minority, you, you sometimes don't get the 